are in part part four. We are in part four of our Aligned Hope series, Aligned Hope series, and we are going to simply, from the, from the topic, we're going to minister. I'll give you the verse of scripture as we kind of walk through. Let me just give you this topic. We're going to be ministering um, from this topic, public service announcement. Public service announcement. Amen. Come on, if you're att- anticipating God saying something to you, come on, put your hands together for real, though, and give him some praise. Some glory, some honor, need some more, need some more room, all this stuff. All right, public, public service, public service announcement. All right, we've been walking through this time because this is what we call the Advent season. And I've taught you um, that Advent is more than just the birth of Jesus Christ. It is also where we are right now. Right now, uh, we currently, as believers, we're in the middle of what they call the sanctification process. I've received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and my personal Savior, and he's sanctifying me. He's sanctifying me. And as I am in this sanctification process, the next step in our order of salvation, it is the fact that Jesus Christ is going to come back glorification uh, and that is us uh, the second advent as it were the way Jesus Christ came when he came as a as a baby and then he's coming again when he comes back again he's not coming as a baby it's not going to be Mary who is not going to be Mary had a little lamb but no he's going to come with a sword and he's going to come and he's going to rapture us out of here and, and we're grateful and we're anticipating that so as we're commemorating the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ we don't get hung up on Christmas day December 25th was not his birthday I got to keep telling you all that because I think it's important because I don't need y'all to get bamboozled and get y'all out here on the streets with these Hebrew Israelites and all these other individuals who don't believe the way that we believe and they say we don't know nothing because here we don't talk about things like this and here I believe it's so important for the people of God to be equipped not just so I can argue with people or be right about something so I can be able to, to answer every man the reason of the hope that's on the inside of me so it doesn't matter if he was born December the 25th or he was born January the 5th the fact is that he was born and it's not not just the fact that he was born he lived and then he died and then he rose again and he's coming back again and come on y'all to clap to that that's the most important thing around this time but the people of God they were they were anticipating they were anticipating there was, there was a group of people a remnant I should say that was looking for God to do something different between the testaments from Malachi to Matthew that's what they call the intertestamental time this is the the dark time or as it were um, the silent years I can't think of the theological term right now between the between the testaments uh, the way it was no word, there was no vision, there was no prophetic word, there was no miracles or anything. It was a, a time to where uh, the, the voice of God was silent. And here it was some dark times. If, if any time it seemed as if that God had forgotten about his people, it was during this particular time. But as I believe that as God had set the people of God up for them to see something fresh and experience something new, always remember that in your life when things are real bad and things are real, real dark. All God is doing is setting you up for the new new. That's all he's doing. He's just setting you up for the new new. Not my sister. I love you, Danita, Danita Hartsville. We call it new new. But no, I'm saying God is getting ready to do the N-E-W, N-E-W, the new, the new, the new new. God is getting ready to do something fresh in our life. In fact, I called the last week. God is getting ready to, we're getting ready to experience the dawning of a new day, the dawning of a new day. And I believe that that's exactly what God is doing. And so I got to give you just a couple of principles from last week. Because really the story that we talked about last week with Zacharias and Elizabeth uh, really marries this story that we're going to talk about um, tonight about this young lady by the name of Mary. They they go together. It's not not an either or. It's a both and. Uh, So the first thing that I want to remind you of that we spoke about last week, that the dawning of a new day is on, and all of these from last week that's going to be up on the screen. It's not going to be on your your nose. The dawning of a new day is inevitable when my life is properly aligned. When, When my life is properly aligned something has to change something has to change there's going to be a freshness there's going to be a revival there's going to be a renewal there's going to be something that God downloads in my spirit and even in my circumstances never change because this is important it's not so much about my circumstances changing as so much as it is about me changing and it is that God will allow me to experience something new whenever it is that I my life is properly aligned and we saw this with Zacharias and Elizabeth the Bible 
Bible said they were both righteous. The, the Bible says both of them were walking blamelessly. The Bible says both of them was keeping the commandments of the Lord. So it, something has to happen. And then the second thing we talked about is on the screen. The dawning of a new day is inevitable because God is a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. So, so not only when I, it's not just the fact that God is nudging me to get in alignment. It's not the fact that God is pulling me to get in alignment. And then now here, God, I'm in alignment. I'm here where you told me to be at. And then he's just going to leave me here forever. But no, because he is a promise keeper, when I get into alignment, he's going to perform his word. Yes, he is. He's going to perform his word because he is what? He's a promise keeper because his promises are irrevocable. His promises are unchanging. It is, and it is God. God not only has the power to be able to keep his promises, but God also has the desire to be able to keep his promises. So it's getting ready to be a dawning of a new day. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And then another thing I want to remind you from last week because of the fact that Zacharias and Elizabeth and the people of God as a whole were waiting for God to shift and to move. Listen, listen to this because Zacharias was old. Elizabeth, Zach said that she was advanced in years. Zach was old, but Elizabeth was old, old is what Zach said. Here it is the dawning of a new day is not contingent upon my current condition. Here it is, they had, they, had, they had missed their prime, according to man. Their time for them to be able to reproduce was over. They were, they were advanced in years. It seemed like their season had, had passed by. It seems as if that whatever God was going to do, if he was going to do it, he would have been done it by now. And because he had not done it by now, it's not going to happen. So God doing something fresh has nothing to do with how weak I am and how vulnerable I am and how it looks like I'm behind on the scorecard God is going going to do something fresh and then look at this because God not only not only is, is, is it has nothing to do with my condition it has nothing to do really with, with, with what I want to do or as it relates to me saying here look God pick me I want to do it I want to do it no because the dawning of a new day is dependent upon God's sovereign selection me, me, meaning every now and then God just picks me for something every now and then God just chooses me for something they they, they say the favor is not fair can, can I tell you favor is not fair but also favor isn't cheap because you got to go through some things but every now and then God will pick you out of something he'll pick you out of a crowd God will pick you out of a family God will pick you out of a generation God will pick you out of a people and because of his sovereign selection he is going to use you to help to usher in the dawning of a new day and God can pick us up not because we're better not because oh we we know the Bible from cover to cover no we just chosen no we just we just God's favor right we just his favor we go we're gonna get back to that in a moment here let, the last thing I want to tell you from last week. Y'all good? I'm just setting up the context. You, in order for you to get the content, to respect the content I'm going to give you, you got to know the context. So let me give you the last thing from last week. The dawning of a new day is not contingent upon my ability to understand what God is going to do. I don't have to know everything and figure everything out, but God will put you in a season in your life that where you just got to take him at his word. You got to take him for what it is. He said, take his word at face value and God will allow us to experience something new or something fresh but so with all of these things that was going on in the time of the people of God they were in nationwide apostasy the people of God had fallen away from God and here I told you that there was a time of 400 years there was a silent time no voice no miracle no anything I told noonday I said man I can't imagine going one week without God's presence I, I can't imagine going one week without God speaking something to me I haven't had assurance of the Holy Spirit without God nudge I can't imagine going through that for, for, for 40 hours or, or for 40 weeks or for 40 months they had 400 years where there was no word from God that where, that where heaven was silent and can you imagine look look at us we, we, we Holy Ghost filled we flowing in all of the gifts we got the word we got the spirit of God and look at this thick darkness that we're experiencing in our day can you imagine how much darker it was back then whenever that God was not flowing or speaking to his people the way there was a famine in the land Amos said Amos 8 11 said there's a famine not a not a bread or water but a famine of the word of God can you imagine how dark it was in their day oh but my friend can I tell you in the midst of that gross darkness in the midst when it's Egypt black they say Egypt black is when it's so black you can't even see in front of your face you can't even see your hand in front of you that's how dark it was but in the midst of that gross darkness God has sent a word that appears through the darkness good 
God. God has sent a word that will go through the darkness and be able to shine the light of God in our life. And that's what God is desiring to do for you in this season. It's not for us to tuck our tail and run. It's not for us to say, oh, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. It may be. Oh, but for the people of God, we down in Goshen, baby. Oh, for the people of God, I'm not scaling back, but God getting ready to, I'm, I'm on my way up. God, God getting ready to level me up. Yes, he is. God getting ready to do something fresh in my life. God getting ready to do something new. There's a dawning, there's a dawning of a new day. In fact, not only the dawning of a new day, let me, let me, let me break up our regular schedule program because, see, I believe God wants to give us a public service announcement. I believe he really does. So, so, so he's already pierced the darkness. Gabriel has pierced the darkness and come to Zacharias and given him that word. And now we, now we know that the, really the ball the, is beginning to move. God is putting his plan into motion. But then there's something more that God desires to announce. There's something more that God desires to say to us. So, so what I hear you, y'all are so attentive. You're already asking me. So, so what is a public service announcement? You, you say, well, 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 what is this? I'm so glad you asked. I came prepared. I came prepared. It's right there. Prepared people for a prepared place. Let me tell you what a public service announcement is. It is commonly known by, by, the, by the PSA acronym. PSA. We put out a PSA at week 52 when we, was, uh, we, was, we, we, had, we hadn't been in service for a year. And uh, as an, in normal, in normal service, we still but we never really stopped, you know. We we we've been here, but the point is, it's been been it, at week fifty two. We put out a PSA, and we we kind of had a little thing from each ministry and did something, just kind of giving a public service announcement to those individuals that's a part of TIL. But the technical definition is on your paper. The first thing on your paper, top left. Look at it. It says the public service announcement, commonly known by the PSA acronym. Look at this. Is a message spread in the interest of the public. So there's a message that will be spread that's for the benefit of the people. And, and look at this. And not only that, the objects of the PSA are to raise the awareness or raise awareness. And look at this. Change public attitudes, opinions, or even behavior towards an issue. So we just don't get a, 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 a pardoning the interruption just to interrupt us. We just don't. We don't we, they don't give us a PSA to tell us something that we already know. They don't give us a PSA and then we just business as usual. It's almost like you've been in a strange place. You're in a strange place and then you hear the fire alarm. You see the, the light flashing in and in and you just you know you never been there before it, it will it will behoove you to try to figure out is this a drill or is this a real deal is it is this is this really a fire you just not gonna just keep on going I'm just gonna keep on going and keep on doing what I need to do because you don't know so an alarm is telling us that something is happening an alarm is in place to remind us that we need to be able to when we hear the alarm or when we hear this public service announcement we need to be able to raise our awareness awareness or we need to change our attitude or we need to change our opinion or we need to change our behavior towards an announcement what what you trying to say bro pastor i'm trying to tell you not not a psa in the natural but god sent gabriel to be able to give a psa as relates to what's getting ready to happen and god sent uh, pc in here today pastor Kobe nesbitt here to you today to be able to give you some public sir some pc pc, PC, PC uh, god, god sent god, god God sent me here today to give you some public uh, public service announcement to let you know that your, your awareness needs to change. Your, your attitude needs to change. Your opinion needs to change as relates to the issues, the issues of your life. I, I'm too excited tonight, but that's okay. I, 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 feel, I feel it down in my shot now, now. So, so it's, good. it's good to go. Can I tell you that if you look at the people of Israel, it seemed like God had forgotten them. Yeah. And when you look at what was going on, they, they, they fresh out of captivity. They fresh out of, out, of, out of trying to rebuild, didn't rebuild, got to rebuild. Then now, now even, let's just fast forward. And right now, the time of Christ, how many of us think about this? The time of Christ, when he was born, he was born in oppression. He was born in struggle. The people of God were not free. They were, he was born. They were under Roman rule. They were under Roman rule. So he been telling me, they're looking for the Messiah to come. I know we're finna come out the ghetto now. Here comes the Messiah. I know we're getting ready to overthrow Master now. Hey, we 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 under, we under Roman rule. But here Jesus came into the earth not to reestablish what was going on here, but he was trying to set up a heavenly kingdom. In fact, he was trying to bring the people of God 
into alignment. You see what? He was trying to bring us into alignment. What, what's alignment? Alignment. One more again. Alignment is the act of aligning or state of being aligned, especially, say this with me, proper positioning. I need you to say that with me. Proper positioning. That's what this year has all been about. It's about proper positioning. That God, even if I don't move physically, God wants me to get in alignment. He wants me to pivot, as it were, as when I was facing one way or off center or not where I need to be. And he was putting me in proper alignment because here, when I get in the proper place and I get in proper alignment, I can look for an up and up and up and up and up and up in heaven. That's how they say in that song, an up and up and up up in heaven. God, God, I want, I want to up, I want, I want an open heaven. Y'all, y'all don't know that song. I get an up and up and up in heaven. Can I, can I tell you that God is trying to give us an up and up in heaven? Let, let me, let me help you here because I got, I got a public service announcement for you tonight. Here it is. Here's the first one I'm gonna give you. In your concealed place. God sees you and desires to use you where you are <laughs> in, in your concealed. This is a public service announcement. When I hear when I hear a public service announcement, it's for me to raise my awareness. It's to be able to change my attitude. It's for me to be able to change my behavior towards it in your concealed place, in your hidden place, in, in your in your place that is in, it seemingly is off the map or off the radar. God sees me in my concealed place, and God desires to use me in my concealed place. Look, look at Luke chapter. The one verse 26 so y'all don't think I'm making this up Luke 126 says in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth in, in the sixth month. What are you talking about, Dr. Luke? When you say the sixth month, they see we Bible teach. We got to walk through the word here. That's what we're doing here. I need the Bible to talk. If I don't got the Bible, I don't got nothing to say. Here, the sixth month is saying the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. So in the sixth month, it's six months. And she's been pregnant for six months. Yeah, here, Gabe's first message was to, to, to Zacharias. And now six months later, God is sending him to give the second... Zacharias was with his, his son is going to be the forerunner going to be John the Baptist the one that's going to introduce Jesus and now six months later here comes here comes Gabriel again did you know this I know you did because I taught y'all this that, that, that all, out of all of the hosts of angels that's in scripture there's only two that's named one, one, one name is Michael and the other name is I gave y'all the easy one because that's the one that I just read. I just, see how I did that? I want y'all to win. I'm here for y'all. I want y'all to win. I, I don't want to confuse you here. I gave it the easy one. I could have said Gabriel's the one. What's the other name? So the, the, only, the only two the only two that are named is, is Michael and Gabe. So, so Mike, Michael was the warring angel. When, 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 when Mike showed up, somebody was getting ready to like Michael Jordan kind of went. When Mike showed up, somebody was getting ready to lose, getting ready to lose. When, when Mike showed up but, and when Gabe showed up, Gabe was the messenger. And here he came and give 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 uh give mary this message he shows up and the bible says he showed up in this place called <clears throat> nazareth this, this is important because here if, if god has been si silent for 400 years and he decides to show up to make a public service announcement i would think he would go to the capital I would think that he would go to the, to, to the palace. I, I would think he would go to Jerusalem. I, I would think he would go to the Mecca, go to the place, the religious hub. I, I would think he would go to where, where the people are, where the, where the who's who are. But here, God shows up to a place called Nazareth. Can, can I tell you that Nazareth is something that is never mentioned in the Old Testament. It's only mentioned in the New Testament. Nazareth is an inconspicuous place. It's a place that we would not know anything about. There's no information about Nazareth prior to this angel showing up because it was a minuscule, just a small, obscure place. And God sends, he sends his messenger to a concealed place. God, God sends his message, God sends his word to a place that's hidden, to a place that's off the radar, that's off the map, to a place that seems like it's overlooked, to a place that seems like it's minuscule, there's nothing happening here. And this is where God decides to send, to send, to send his word. He, give, he gives an announcement that this is where, not where he's going to be born, he's going to be born in Bethlehem, but here he's going to be brought up in Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth. This is going to be where he's going to be reared and where he's going to be raised. What, what's the point that I'm trying to make here? The point that I'm trying to make is that 
that God, he sees you and I. Like he saw Mary, he saw this young girl who theologians say she couldn't been no older than 16 at the most. She from the age of 12 to 16. This young girl who lives in this inconspicuous town with a, with a small family. She's just going to be living her life. She's going to get married. She's going to have children. And then she's going to die. And that's the rigors of that society. Those people, they get married, they have their children, and they die. But in the middle of all of that mundane, in the middle of, in the middle of her just going through the motion, in the middle of her just living her life, God shows up and say, can I tell you something? I see you in your concealed place. And I desire, I desire to you. It, it, it's enough for God to see me in my concealed place. But it's another thing for God to see me and say, I want to use you right where... Right where you are, Lord, have mercy. This is so good to me. What, what does Nazareth name mean? Na, na, Naz means branch. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. It, mean, it means branch. It, means branch. It, it makes me think about individuals who like to plant things. It makes me think about uh, agriculture. It makes me think about whenever it is that you, that you want, that you want to, uh, if you want to, uh, some, some, some tomatoes, you know, you get a tomato seed and you take the tomato seed and you put it in the earth. You put it in the ground. You, you can't have a tomato plant. You can't have a banana plant. You can't have oranges and apples if you don't have, first of all, a, what? a seed. And here, can I tell you that God, he, he, he really put seed in concealed places. God takes seed and he puts it in, in, in dirty environments and in dirty places that where it seems like it's just, it just out of sight, out of mind. But literally what that seed is doing when it's under the soil, when it's in the dirt and when it's germinating, it's literally dying, Lord have mercy. And whenever it is, it's dying, it's getting ready to birth something new. That, that, that's, all, that's all I'm trying to say to you because maybe you feel like you are off the radar. Maybe you feel like nobody, nobody cares about you, nobody loves you. You may feel like that you're, you're underappreciated. Maybe you're on that job, you're overworked, you're underpaid, you're underappreciated. Maybe in the kingdom of God, you haven't gotten your time. God hasn't, God hasn't let open up the floodgates. You saw something, God revealed something to you, and it seemed like you're going in the wrong direction. But can I tell you that God sees you in your concealed place? And not only does he see you, he's grooming you. He's growing you. He develop, it's something about Nazareth that Nazareth makes me a bit mature. It's something about Nazareth that God is grooming me in. Naz. It's something about being in Nazareth that God is pulling some things out. You know why? Because whenever I finally bust the soil, whenever I come from under the dirt, and whenever the world sees me and the sun is shining on me for real though, it's some things that fell on me in the dirt that can't be seen in the sunshine. Oh, you preaching this Bible. Let me get out of here. It's just a, it's just the name of the city. I'm sorry, y'all. It's just a name of the city. <laughs> Not only that, look at this. Naz means branch, but pres pre 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 preservation. Somebody say preservation, because I couldn't the first time. Preservation. Look, here, can I tell you? <laughs> that means pres preservation. In other words, could it be that your Nazareth is the only thing that's keeping you alive? Can, can it be that concealed place? Could, could it be that place that God has you in confinement? I know you want to bust out. I know you want to get out. I know you want to quit. I know you want to stop. I know you want to divorce. I know you want to do what you want to do. But here, can I tell you, I, I, as I look back over my life and I think things over, if some things I want to get out of, if I would have got out too soon, when I would have got out, it would have killed me. If I would have got out too soon, I would have missed his plan. I would have missed his bet. But God got me in a hidden place because he tried to keep me well oh, that's better than that's better than y'all respond that's okay that's okay i'm normally more excited than y'all anyway that's okay y'all will catch up with me by the time it's over hopefully can i tell you here, look look at isaiah look what isaiah said in isaiah 11 and 1 he talked about he talked about this 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 imagery that i just gave you isaiah 11 and 1 said there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of jesse hmm. and a and a branch from his roots shall shall bear fruit. I, I don't got time to unpack that, but it's just, it's just simply reminding us that God saw, he, he sovereignly planted his son to be reared in Nazareth, in the obscure place. And here God is making a, a public service announcement to this girl and saying to her that God desires to do something. And it's not even, it's not like let Nazareth, it just, I know I painted the picture on one side just saying it was just small, uh, minuscule, it was nothing happening, it was not a place, it was not a vacation destination. You didn't say, ooh, one day I want to go to Nazareth. No, that's, what, that's not how Nazareth was. But it had, it had a negative connotation. Look, look at John 1.45. I'm not making it up. Look, John 1.45 is on the screen. Look, he said, Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, we have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Look at this. He said, Jesus 
of Bethlehem. Jesus of Judea. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. The son of Joseph. Look at this. Look what Nate Dogg said. Nate Dogg said in verse 46. Nate Dogg says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He said, he said, Jesus of, 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 of Nazareth, Je- Jesus of, of, can anything good come from that? Look at the, look at the, look at the, the mindset behind Nazareth. They said, can anything good come from this? And this is, how, this is what people will do. People, people will only look at where you start. People will only look at where you come from. People will only look at your limitation. People will only, where the people will hold you hostage in where you came from. And they hold you hostage in your past and hostage in your mistake and hostage on where, where it is that God has brought you from but can I tell you it's not about where I come from it's about where God is taking me oh can anything good come out of Nazareth can anything good come off of Dunn Avenue anything good come out of Copper Hill anything good come out of Turtle Creek anything good come out of Biscayne anything good come out of Reball anything good come out of wherever you're from anything good come from where, wherever you're from can anything yes 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 it can somebody say yes it can I, I, can anything good come out of abuse anything good come out of adultery anything good come out of child out of well, uh, anything good come out of oh my god can anything good yes, yes somebody say yes it can yes it can let me get out of here let me get out of here I'm, I'm too excited I'm so sorry y'all I just like the, I just like the Bible I'm sorry but can I, can I, can I say that here <laughs> something good can come and, and, and it's not just I'm, I'm glad I'm glad about it it's not just it's not just his son though God just uh, just doesn't handle his son this way it's not just those individuals the chosen frozen no God just doesn't have a select group of people that he works through and uses look at Acts 10 34 so Peter said he opened his mouth and said truly I understand that God shows no partiality and see 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 God is not like you and I we we, we treat certain kind of folks certain kind of ways <laughs> We, we, we treat certain folks, folk, if somebody tell you, if somebody tell you where they from or tell you their education or they splitting verbs or they sounding all ghetto or loud and all that, we be like, oh, we just, we just kind of write them off. And we may, be, we may be listening, we may be looking at them rather, but our mind is going, we're not even in conversation. We're just trying to win. When will they shut up? And can I tell you, but God is not like that. He has no respect to a person. Only thing I'm trying to tell you, my friend, is that God desires to use all of us. He desires to use us and pull us out of way ever our Nazareth is. Let me give you the second thing. I got, I got another public service now. Can I give you another one? Public service now. Look at the second one. Your, your, your level of commitment, look at this, to completion mm-hmm. will determine the capacity of your assignment. That's great. Yeah, well, yeah, well. I, I know there's a lot of C's, but it's good. It was good to me. As I, kept, as I, as I was typing them up, they kept coming. So I had to, I, had to, I know there's a lot of C's, but it's okay. Just don't try to say it fast. Your, your level of commitment... <laughs> Look at it. Yes, yes, yes. Your level of commitment to completion will determine the capacity of your assignment. What, what, what do you see that at, Pastor? Right here in verse 27. Look, look what it says. The Bible says, to a virgin betrothed or engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. I, I told Noonday. You know, I, you know, uh, Rick Warren Bible study methods is one of the one of the things I, I picked this up from. Uh, Shameless plug is starting in January. Bible study methods it kind of just shows you how to walk through God's word, how to study God's word on your own. It's not any wizardry. Uh, and when it comes down to the the word of God, you just need a plan. You just need the right tools. If you if you're a mechanic, you just need some tools. If you're a baker, you just need tools. If you're a musician, you just need tools. Whatever you do, you need the right tools. And and Bible study methods help you get the right tools. Every, every first Wednesday at 7 p.m., it'll teach you how to do this. And so one of the books that I remember. I started studying this book many, many years ago, and one of the tools it tells you whenever you're studying God's word, put the verse back up for me, please. Whenever you're studying God's word, you need to read the verse at least 20 times. You read it, then you read it, and then you read it again, then you read it again, and then I mentioned that you're supposed to read, read it again. <laughs> and here, as, I, as I was reading this and reading this, I noticed something. Because I was looking for, I was looking for her name. I knew her name was in here, but I kept reading it, and I was like, "Well, where's her name at?" Because I was trying to define her name and put her name in. There. I still forgot to, to get the definition of her name, and I don't even know this. And I give it to you in a second if the Lord remind me. Here it is. But but as I'm reading this and reading this, I see something strange. I I, I see the scripture, Doctor Luke. Doctor Luke. Uh, he 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 explains to me her character before I even see her name. Doctor Luke. He describes to me her capacity. Before I even see her name. In a real sense, Dr. Luke describes to me, because we're going to be knowing in a minute, he, he describes to me her assignment before I even know her name. 
And see, I think in our day and time, we have it vice versa. We want them to, we have a destiny's child anointing. We want to say my name, say my name. We want, we want folks to know our name, you know, put some, put some respect on my name is what we want here. And here, no, no, but, but when I see Mary, it's some, you know, it's something about Mary. It's something about Mary here that where I see her assignment, I, I see literally her character. I see her character before I see her name. What, what do I mean? I, I simply mean this because your level of commitment to completion, what, what is complete? Completion. completion is another definition I forgot to give, give forgot to give you forgot to give you here it is because Mary, Mary for her being for her being a virgin this speaks to her purity yeah. for her being a virgin it speaks to she has been withholding herself for her to be a virgin, do I need to explain what a virgin? For her, for her being a virgin, the, cheek, the kids say no. They don't, I don't know what the kids say. Nah, we know we got you, Pastor. Keep going, keep going. Here, can, I, can I tell you that here, whenever, whenever it is that we see her being a virgin, we see that it speaks to her purity. Pure. One definition for purity is completion. So I'm not talking about, because that, that, that ship is sailed in some of our areas when it comes down to natural virginity. That, that, that ship is sailed. So, 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 but, but the point I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make as relates to, as relates to, as relates to purity, as relates to withholding myself. What's the point? Because the fact that Mary was a virgin, the fact that Mary was committed to completion, the fact that Mary did not wait for God to tell her what he desired to do in her life, then she tried to get together but Mary just on her own based off the law based off the word she was holding herself and keeping herself and because she was keeping herself without knowing what God was going to do God said you know what you qualify you know what God said I'm getting ready to give you an assignment y'all y'all ain't treating me good I never heard nobody say that a day in my life and I'm just sitting there looking like yeah, like there's just something there's just something just jumped off the turn of truck but can I tell you here that God will God with my level of commission commitment to my completion it will determine my, the capacity of my assignment say it plain pastor I'm saying that God can't use me to do a thing if I'm not in capacity to be able to handle it if I don't do what I need to do behind the scenes do what I need to do in another season I cannot mishandle my now run into my next and I won't be able to be have the capacity for what God has for me that's some good preaching right there y'all that's some good preaching that's some good preaching that's some good preaching <laughs> can I tell you here that I, I gotta be committed what, what, what am I trying to tell you I'm trying to tell you that you you got to do you got to do the best you can where you are and you got to and you got to maximize where you are and you got to maximize your moment that you have now and and, and when you maximize your moment that's what God will say now I can trust you with something else yeah. she would have never I'm sure there was more virgins there I'm sure there was other individuals there but can I tell you that the that the pool got chopped in half if you wasn't even keeping yourself so in a real sense, how I handle my season of concealment will determine my capacity. Hmm. Thank you so much, Clapper. I love that. You're anointed too. I love that. I, I, heard, the, I heard the rivers flowing on that hand. Right there. I'm talking about I need, I need that. Clapper, keep on clapping. Can I tell you here? I said how I handle my, my season of concealment. See, some of us, we, we think because nobody know us, I think we can get away with some dirt and do some dirt. I never forget my wife. Uh, she was baking America. I tell her, uh, and she she was she was waiting on somebody, and she she had you know customers that come and come and come, and it was just one particular individual, just as mean and just as nasty as they could be. That was it was I don't even know it was, it was before, before I was ever in the picture. Then I came in the picture. We got married and I brought her to Philippians, and then she looked up and she said, "Oh, look at that elder right there. I remember him." He cussed me out at the y'all ain't gonna, <laughs> cussed me out at the bank with me. Y'all ain't, ain't, ain't gonna talk to me here. In, in other words, in no, nobody ever ran into somebody in another season. That's all, that's, all, that's all I'm trying to say. All I'm trying to say is the way you handle yourself. You don't know. You don't know what God has. Uh, you know what God is up to. You don't know what God trying to expose you to. You don't know what God has. In a real sense, let me say it. I'm got to move. My purity positions me. I'm not, I'm not talking about sinless perfection, but if I am a child of God, I am the sinless. I, I am. So, so my pursuit of God, my purity, the things that I abstain from, <laughs> yeah. 
it really positions me and qualifies me that for God to, to give me something. That's where we talk, I got to go. I got to move off this point. But I give you one more. I'm give you one more can I give you one more amplification? Amplify one more time. Here, it's like the office of a bishop. The Bible says if any man, if any man desire an office of a bishop, he desires a good thing. A bishop, a overseer, elder, uh, same all synonymous terms, same term. So in other words, if, if there's nothing wrong with an individual desiring a particular office, but then Paul goes on and gives us those moral qualifications. He goes on and gives us these moral qualifications. And this person needs to be need to be blameless, need to be husband and one wife, don't be a striker, need to be given hospitality. And then there's some moral and domestic qualification in order for you to qualify for the position. So once you get in the position, if you mess up, at least we know some good in there because you met the qualifications. But the problem is so many of us want the position and we have not met the qualifications. And I'm not just talking about bishop. I'm talking about any kind of position. I'm talking about anything we desire to do. We want to be you, but we have not met the qualifications. And I hear you. I hear you. Hey, hey, God calls to qualify. He don't qualify. To go. I, I get what you're saying. It's God's favor. It's God's anointing to do what we need to do. Oh, but can I tell you, you can, you can help God out in the way that you carry it in the way that you carry it. So let me go because y'all, y'all don't like me no more. We'll dance in a second. Here we go. Let me tell you this. I got another public service announcement. Let me go. Another, another public, here it is. Got, got the next one right here. Thank you, Ariel. That's why Ariel. How have you said it? It says, God, 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 God's call concerning you is often contradictory to your circumstances. <laughs> I got God's call concerning you. Uh, this is a public service announcement. Right before you, right before you go into your 2022, let me, let me give you a public service announcement. That, that God's call concerning you. He, he's calling you, and where God is calling you, and what God is saying concerning you, it totally contradicts what you see. <laughs> it's right here in verse 28. I'm not making it up. Look at it. Look at it right here. And, he's, and he came to her. G Gabriel, Gabriel, right? He came to her. He said, greetings, oh favored one. Yeah, that, that, that's some good stuff there. See, see, y'all think I'm, I'm going to the favored. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going to the favored yet uh, because when he says greetings, <laughs> him, him saying greetings is more than him just saying hello. Uh -huh. it, it's more than just saying hello. Uh, here, here, the angel is literally, Gabriel is literally speaking to something on the inside of her. Uh -huh. Only God can speak something in us that's not there. He's only, here, Gabe is only confirming. Because when you push into the Greek and look at his word greeting, we got the definition here, but this is literally a command. He's commanding her. What, what is he commanding her? I got it right here for you. Greeting is to hail, is to greet, is to wish of health and happiness. That's the greeting. That's the salutation. But go further. He, he's speaking strength to her. Yeah. He's speaking, he's making her firm. He, he's, he's, bringing, he's speaking joy to her, good God. He, he's telling her, be glad. He didn't say, I hope, I hope you be glad. I hope you feel better. I hope you'll be happy one day. No, he's speaking to something that's already on the inside of her. What, what, what am I trying to tell you? This, 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 this Mary, she must, have had to be, she must have been all discombobulated. She must have been all over the place. But Gabriel shows up and he says, he not only says hello, but he says woman of God. He speaks to her. And can I tell you that God just does not speak to me where I am but God gives me a word based on where he's trying to push me at God speaks a word that tries to propel me into my future yes he does you preaching this Bible sir um, <laughs> can I tell you <laughs> he says hello hello Mary but 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 more than hello straighten up not, not only hello stop all that crying not, not only hello I put more in you, says God. <laughs> You're firmer than that. You, you, got, you got joy. How? You, you, you've been serving God all this time. And you still up and down and in and out and all of that. And no, Gabe is speaking to something on the inside of her. But he doesn't stop there. Say, say he don't stop there. He don't stop there. He, he goes on. You, you come on. Y'all a smart class. Y'all see it's more in that verse. Verse 28. He says, not only hello, <laughs> but also, oh, favored one. Lord have mercy. It, you, you, you favor, girl. What, what does favor mean? Of course, you, you know, I brought you a definition. Favor means graced bestowed. <laughs> I'm bestowing grace on you. Great. We, we, we've done grace a, a disservice through the years just saying unmerited favor. And that's true is unmerited favor. 
But grace is also God's divine ability. Grace is also God gives me the grace to be able to do what I can't do on my own. And here he's I'm I'm bestowing you. Uh, Mary, I know you in this obscure place. I know you in this concealed place. I know you feel like that that you just in the rigor, in the routine, on the hamster wheel, in the rat race of life. But God is getting ready to bestow bestow some grace on your life. You are recipients of God's freely bestowing his beneficial goodwill to towards you I don't know who I'm talking to but can I tell you all I'm trying to say to you is is that whenever it is that God comes and announce something to you or calls you concerning something God does not call you or speak to you based off where you presently are but God speaks to you based off of where he's trying to carry you at and don't you ever look at where you are don't you ever look at what you're going through and based off God's call and minimize his call based off your circumstances oh God I, Ephesians 1 6 says, I don't got time. Ephesians 1 6 says that we've been accepted into the beloved. Yeah. <laughs> we've been accepted into the beloved. In other words, come out of being isolated from me and come into the beloved. Come out of being alienated and come into the beloved. Come out of your father didn't bother, your mother didn't cover, people didn't love you. He said, come out of that mess and come into the beloved because I love you. And that's all God is trying to say to us. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're going through, but God told me to tell you, you are my friend. You are a man of God. You are my friend. You are a woman of God. You are a good mama. You are a good daddy. You are a good provider. Oh, can I tell you that you are what God says you are? Yes, you are. Somebody say, I receive that. Not, not only, not only, not only. Is God call her <laughs> and it's totally contradicting her circumstances. But look what else God tell her. I got to tell you, I'm hitting it and I'm gone. Verse 28, one more again. Hmm, I didn't say what I wanted to say, but I guess I cleaned it up. Y'all seen that? I didn't say hit it and quit it. Look what it says. Luke, Luke 128. Look what it says. One more time. It says, the Lord is with you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? He shows up and says to her, man, that, he, said, he said, stand up. There's more in you. <laughs> then he says, your favor. Then he said, God is with you. What more does somebody have to tell us? What more does somebody have to remind us? We can raise our right hand and benedict, but there's much more. Somebody say it's more. There's more. There's more. You know, in, in fact, there's something about Mary. But let me give you another public service announcement here. Let me give you another one. Uh, your, your, your level of commitment. Here's some more seeds. Y'all brace, brace yourself. Hold on to your hat here. Your, your, your level of commitment. <laughs> here it is. To the crushing. To the crushing process will determine the capacity of your assignment. So not only, not only your commitment to completion, purity, p- purity means complete, means whole, you withholding. So your, your commitment to completion would determine your capacity, but also your level of commitment in the crushing process. Mm, all right, what do you mean, bro, Pastor? Right here in verse 29. Now come on, let's look at it. Let me look at it. Verse 29 says, but she was greatly troubled. Look, read it, look at it. She was greatly troubled at the angel. She, she was greatly troubled because she saw Gabriel. At the what? At the so it's not so much of what she saw that troubled her as much, uh, as, much as it was of what he, of what he said. So, so, so what are you trying to say, bro, Pastor? This right here, her response to what Gabriel said to her shows us where Mary is at spiritually. This shows her Humility. Because she hears Gabriel talking to her, and she like, who are you talking to? Come on, that's, that's what we talk. That's what I say to my kids. Who are you talking to? Nobody, nobody, daddy, nobody. I say, who are you talking to? Sometimes I just say it just so I can say I can know. But sometimes I walk by and just slap them just to let them know I'm still a big pop. I say, who are you talking to? Who are you looking at like that? Don't be stomping away like, what you, what you think you do? And this is what Mary said, who are you talking to? She's troubled. The Bible says she's troubled at the same. Look at it says. It says, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. What is he talking about? It shows her humility. In other words, make it plain, Pastor. I'm trying my best. In other words, every now and then, God will give us a glimmer of something that he sees in us. Come on, help me, Ariel. You sound like you're exactly right. That I don't see myself. Every now and then, God uh, say something to uh, Come on here. Because there's plenty, there should be some areas in your life that you know that the Lord still has you under construction. You know you're still in the sanctification process in this area. Come on, we got the fruit of the Spirit, which means love, joy, patience, peace, long sir. And some of our fruit is not as, as developed as others. And here, God is saying, no, you can keep your patience. God said, no, you can. Watch 
your mouth. No, you can, but you can't. Come on, you can. Yeah, yeah, yes, you can. You can, you can, you can, you can. Woo! Yeah, you can. Come on here, can I tell you that you can? Only my PCC folk know that reason. You can, you can. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this woman is humble. You know why she's humble? Because she don't feel like she's all of that. God interrupts her life, gives her a public service announcement, and she says, oh, no, not me. What you, what you talking? I know you're not giving me this kind of salutation. I know you're not speaking, speaking to me concerning this. And I love this, and it shows us marriage. And see, see, we've done a disservice of our Protestant church. We're, we're Protestant church, meaning anti-Catholic. We don't believe in the Pope and all that stuff and Mariology. See, our, 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 the way we believe, some of, sometimes we, we, we underemphasize Mary. Our Catholic friends overemphasize her. They pray to her and they do all this. Hail Mary, the mother of grace, mother of God. She's not the mother of God. She's not infallible. She didn't die for our sins. We don't pray to her and all that kind of stuff. No. So, so they overemphasize and sometimes we underemphasize. This, this woman has some, some, she was humble and God loves humility. Look at, look at Psalm 51, 17. Let me rush up. Psalm 51, 17 says, the sacrifices of God, look at this, are a broken spirit. Not a praise break. A broken spirit. <laughs> He says, a broken spirit. Look at this. A broken and contrite heart. Oh, oh God. Look at David. If, if anybody can tell us about this, is Brother David. David has messed up badly, royally. This Psalm 51 is all about him repenting, all about him saying he's sorry about what he's done. And this is what David said. God wants from us a contrite. What is a contrite? Here's the point. This is why I'm speaking to humility. This is, what, this, is, this is what I see. This is what God is saying to us tonight even. God wants us to be in a place when we're contrite. Look what contrite means. It means feeling or expressing pain or sorrow for sins. That's one part. Meaning that I sin and I'm sorry for because I hurt God, not because I got caught. You know, there's different type of, there's different levels of this. Whenever they do, when we sin and we get exposed or, or whenever something happens, something hit the fan and some people can cry their eyes out because they got caught. But, and, but no, God doesn't want us to cry that way and feel that way. He wants us to feel in a way, you know what, God, I hurt you. I let you down. I dishonored you. You've been too good to me, God, for me to respond this way. Yeah. And here, so it's not only that, not only sin, but I love this, sorrow or feeling of pain for offenses. Yes. Or offenses, meaning, meaning crushed. What, what are you trying to say, Pastor? Humility is... <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of myself. Humility is whatever God says concerning me. I can't get stuck in my feelings, but I respond in alignment. <laughs> Y'all missed it. This is what this is what alignment alignment says. Kobe, you're off in this area. Pride says no, I'm not. Pride says I'm doing the best I can. Humility says. Okay. <laughs> Humility says, I'm going to do what I need to do. Y'all still not with me here. Y'all still don't believe me. We were doing a little better than that a minute ago. But look, yeah, maybe several years ago, we walked through this topic called the bait of Satan. And it had everything to do with offenses, offenses, how, how, how we can be offended by individuals, even offended by God. I love what Brother John Bevere said. It rings in my spirit even today. He said, God will offend you to show you where you really are. God will let something jump off <laughs> with somebody. To show you where you really are. Not just to show you what we say. Oh, my Angelo said people show you who they are. Believe them. I got you all that. That's what's one part of the story. But also God let that happen to show you so you can believe that you, that you still got an attitude problem. For you to believe somebody cut you off in traffic and you're trying to figure out how that finger got up so fast. The finger telling them that this is the way you need to go. What y'all thought I was talking about? <laughs> God, God tried to, try to show you where you are. And then that's one thing for you to offend me. And then me say, oh, you know what? I was a little sensitive right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? I kind of overreacted right there. If you don't have none of that, then, my friend, you, you deep in pride. If you can never see yourself in nothing, right. you deep in pride. If it's always everybody else's fault, you deep in pride. That's a whole other message right there. I got to go. But every now and then, God will even offend you Amen. to show you where you are. Y'all think, bro, pastor, making this up. John chapter 11 says, uh, Mary and Martha, the house that Jesus was staying at all the time, and Bethany, they said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. If you would have did what I wanted you to do it, when I wanted you to do it and needed you to do it, we wouldn't be in this mess. 
Every now and then, God will offend you to show us where we are. And so this is humility when he reveals to me who I am. I don't dig in. The Bible says in Proverbs, it says, he that hardeneth his neck is often reproved, meaning that God can keep correcting me and correcting me and correcting me about something. And instead, when I don't repent like Saul, that's why Saul got fired and David got forgiven because Saul got stuck in his mess and said, I'm not going to change. I can't help it. This is who I am. And he got stuck. Stuck. The Bible says he that often is reproved and refused to repent, he's going to get stiff neck and I'll never be who it is that God desires me to do. But whenever I live in a place and I'm saying, Lord, have mercy on me, wash me, cleanse me, purge me, God, God can work with that. Oh, Jesus. Psalms 34, 18. Let me let y'all go. The, 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 the Lord is near to the brokenhearted <laughs> and he saves the crush in spirit. He saves us. He rescues us. There's some definitions. Go back and study this whenever it is that you desire. The part I want to get to was, a, was that offense because here 1 Peter 5 and 5 said, likewise, you, you, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. That's not talking about age. That's talking about maturity. And here it is, God, not just, it's one thing for me to say that God offends you. All right, yeah, God, God you should have healed them. God, you should have brought me out. God, how you let them do that to me? God, how you let, and you're offended with God. But every now and then, God will put a leader in your life that will give you instructions, that will speak to you concerning a matter, concerning a thing. And here, the scripture says, I need to submit. And how, how what does submission look like? Submission looks like whatever it is that you're saying, I need to make the proper adjustments. And here, whenever I don't make the proper adjustments, pride, come on, look what that man of God said, pride will keep you from admitting your true condition. God gives us overseers. God gives us leaders. God gives us individuals that will help us the way we can be able to navigate and we can be able to see and to be able to conquer, be able to do. But whenever I refuse and I just want to do my own thing, I'm showing my, my, I'm showing my, my, my pride, I'm not, I'm not walking in humility, but First Peter 5, 5 says, clothe yourselves, not in Gucci, not in, not in polo, clothe yourself with humility toward one another. Look what God does. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. When, I, when, I, when God speaks to me something and I adjust, when God uses my man of God, my woman of God to speak to me and I adjust. Here, this is what I told you last week. I had to put it in right here because the dawn of a new day will, will be released immediately. I still got some time. Will be released immediately when I begin to agree with God. When I agree with him, yes. that's when he, he's going to release it. This is good, y'all. This is good. Come on, y'all clap real quick. Clap, 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 clap. Look at Mary's. Look at Mary's humility. Later on in the chapter, I know y'all going to go home. Y'all going to be up all night. Y'all going to be studying this. Y'all got your notes and your highlighter and all that stuff. Y'all going to be looking at this. I know you're going to be studying. So when you read the rest of the chapter, here, the, 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 this is something that the theologian called the magnificent, the magnificent, rather, the magnificent. This is Mary's songs of praise. Look what she says. She says in Psalm, and, and, and I'm saying Psalm, in Luke 146, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. Verse 47, she says, my spirit rejoiced in God my Savior. Verse 48, here's the part. For, for he looked upon on the humble estate of his servant. Yes. For behold, from now on, all the generations will, will call me blessed. Mary says that God has looked upon me in my situation. Y'all read all these verses. It's Isaiah 66, first, um, and, and Psalms 138, uh, Luke, Luke 130. Let me pick up the story. Let me wrap this up. Luke 130 says, and the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. Yeah. For, what you have, but, but, for, for you have found favor with God. Verse 31, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. <clears throat> Verse 32, he, he, he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give, you, will give to him the throne of his father, David. So I, can, I, I ain't got time to unpack that. Verse 33 says, and, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And to his kingdom there will be no end. Verse 34, here it is. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin? Mary is not asking a question of doubt, but really she, she's trying to figure out. She, she's not questioning the Messiah. She's questioning the fact that the Messiah is coming. She, she's questioning how this is going to happen biologically. I've, 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 I'm pure. I'm complete. I've stayed away. I've abstained from sexual activity. How can this happen? What you talking about? I'm a virgin. How, how can this happen? How can this happen? The God doesn't have an issue with that. But, but listen, Mary trying to figure out, <laughs> listen to me closely. Mary trying to figure out what you, what you talking about happening. That can only happen if I got a man. The Lord say, who says something about a man? 
Yeah, gotta go. Gotta go help it. Gotta go help it. Gotta go help it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Look at you. Write it down. Let me give you this. The, 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 cap, the, cap, the cap to your capacity is not limited to human ability. All, all I'm trying to tell you is, oh my God. All, all I'm trying to tell you is, is that what God desires to do in your life is not contingent upon a man being in your life or a person in your life or an individual helping you in your life. It's not limited to men. I just told you we need people for accountability. I just told you that now. I'm not canceling. I'm just doing I'm just, No, that's not what I'm saying. It's, it's, God says it's, it's not. If, 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 if no one is involved, if no one is with me, God says it's not dependent upon a person's ability. That's going to be better when I preach that somewhere else. Another church is going to be good. I'm going to preach a whole message about no cap. I'm just going to be from the title, no cap. Look at look, Luke. Look, look, 135. It says, and the angel answered and says another, the, the, the Holy Ghost. You just need, you need the Holy Ghost. That's all you need, the Holy Ghost. Verse 36. Hey, look what he says to her. Here it is. This is good. Verse 36 says, and behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age also conceived a son. And, and this is the sixth month with her who's, who, who, who was barren. Hmm. So, so she says, how can this be? Uh, Gabriel gives her an illustration, example, tells her kind of what's going to happen. Holy Spirit going to overshadow you and deposit that holy thing. He, he, he kind of explains. But then he goes and he says, don't stay where you are. Go, go, go see your cousin, Elizabeth. And I, I believe it's strategic that God is telling her to go see Elizabeth because he goes on and says in verse 37, for nothing will be impossible. God notice that Gabriel said that she was old. She's barren and God allowed her to have a child. So what God does, God sends Mary to somebody else who have seen the mighty, the mighty hand of God. Let me get out of here. 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 Because here, here uh, with God, nothing is impossible. Skip, skip, skip. Luke 138. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be, let it be according to your word. She said, According to your word. And the angel departed. I love it. It's something about Mary. She just obeyed. She obeyed to what, what, what was spoken to her, and she did what she needed to do. Here it is, verse 39. This is the last thing I believe. Look at verse 39. Verse 39 says, Look, let me see. This is the last thing. Yeah, this is the last thing. Look, verse 39. Here it is. Is this good, y'all? Is this good? I'm just wishing this tonight. I should have we should have we should have watched a Christmas play or something, I guess. Look at look at one uh look at verse uh verse 38. It says and, and Mary said, Behold, I'm your servant. I already read that. Verse 39, and in those days Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country, into the town to the town of Judah. Verse 40. And she, look at this, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Yes. Oh, my God. Look, 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 look. All right, let me just explain. Your, your, last thing, I'm done. Your level of commitment, this is a public service announcement, y'all. Your level of commitment to your connection is what will cause continual joy. I love you. I love you. Can I tell you here, your, your, your commitment to your connect. Look, look, you, you see the picture. He, he sends her to Elizabeth. The, 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 it's, it's, it's a sense of like-mindedness, like-mindedness. It's, it's a sense of a, a, a camaraderie, congruency. He sends, her, he sends her to Mary. And listen, it's the level of your connection. Because look, the Bible says she stepped in and she greeted her. Verse 41, here's the point. And, and when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary... The baby leaped in her womb. Lord, Lord, have mercy. This, this, is, this is so good because what, what is God saying? God, God says that he will connect you and I to individuals that whenever it is that we hear their voice and hear the word that God put down. Only Mary just rehearsing what she heard. She rehearsing the word of God and she is speaking and as she's speaking, it's vibrating through the atmosphere and it makes, the, it makes Elizabeth baby. Lord, have mercy. All I'm trying to tell you, my friend, is that God... Will allow, will God allow your baby to leave? Yes, sir. And that's, that's, that's all I say. Pastor Kobe, don't be coming here with this, all this old hickory dickory doc, sir. I need you to let, make my baby leave. I need you to speak something to me that can make my baby leave. That let me know I can make it. I can go. Oh, the baby leap. Somebody say leap. Her baby leap. Look, at the, what is it leap? I'm done. Leap means to jump for joy. Leap means to jump or skip. And not, not just one time. Not to skip to my loop. Oh, but a continuous manner. Oh, can I tell you that God has a way of speaking a word in your life. God has a way of connecting you to the right individual, connecting you to the right house that will make your baby leap. Not one time, not two times, not when you feel good, not in March, not in February. Oh, but every day God will give you a continuous leap.
on behalf of everyone at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. We want to thank you for your likes and your shares, your comments and your emojis. But we also want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do know that he told us that we ought to feed the hungry, we ought to clothe the naked, and we ought to be the church. And you can help us to continue to do just that through your generosity. And there are three easy, safe, and secure ways that you can do just that. You can text the word T-I-L-JAX, one word, T-I-L-JAX, to the number 77977. You can go to our website, www.truthandlove.tv, or you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, search for Truth and Love Jax, download our app, and you can give that way. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your generosity, and we love you, and we'll see you next time. Here comes the church. God bless you.